Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video, day 10. We'll take us to the 23rd of November and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the SNGFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe on a couple of weeks, we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video. For the next four weeks, that gets us well into the first half of December. I should get time back for you in a moment. Just say that first, BOC was our 6MB UK weather forecast. So please check out all today's videos and content and like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Also, slightly quiet today. Gas weather is on a Monday after an epic weekend of content. Wasn't wasn't the content of weekend uh, epic? So thank you so much for all of the lovely comments that you've left, particularly for the um, the eleventh winter update. And thank you so much to Jane, to Jane Gregory for the uh, super thanks that Jane left for me on the eleventh winter update. So thank you, thank you so much, Jane, for your uh, kindness and generosity. That's absolutely amazing. If you'd like to give. A super thanks to Gaz Webber. All you need to do is uh, find the thanks button. It will either be along this bar just here on the video, or it will be hidden away behind the three little dots there. But just click the thanks button, and uh, your comment will be flagged up. I'll pin it, and uh, they'll give you a shout out in the uh, videos as we have done for Jane. So thank you so so much, everybody. That's unbelievable. Thank you so much for all of the kindness and the support. Okay, let's have a look at sensory and temperature then. So uh, the CT is now sitting at 8.2. So continuing to uh, come down. 8.2 is 1.7 degrees above the 61 to 99 average. That is provisional to yesterday to the 12th of November. I reckon that could well get down into the sevens by the time we get through to the weekend. Means with GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So we're at London today, so the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off around to a little bit above average at the boat. The upper air temperatures will be dropping, though, as we go through uh, the rest of the, or the middle part of the week. At the end of the week into next weekend, or the coming weekend, the upper air temperatures will kind of lift up a little bit, but it is associated with an area of low pressure. And then after that, hovering quite close to the long-term average, maybe even going a little bit below. We do see quite a few cold on summer members now showing up as we get into the very extended range. So, um... Got the thick green line here, which is the uh, GFS 6 n operational run going quite cold. And the control run as well, the thick blue line, is also going uh, quite cold there. So maybe we're shaping up, <coughs> excuse me, for a bit of a cold snap in the uh, final week or so, five, final weeks, five days or so of uh, uh, November. More about that. Um, when we'll start looking at the chart data, of course, precipitation-wise, more rainfall to come. So uh, we are in a drier slot at the moment, but around the middle part of the week, there will be more heavy rain again on uh, Wednesday into Thursday. And then over the weekend into the beginning of next week, also looking quite unsettled with further rain. Then perhaps a bit of a drier slot opening up just here. Um, and things might get a little bit colder, but then perhaps back to wetter weather again as we get through to the end of the month. Although, of course, that is a long way out. Temperature anomalies from the 13th, 21st of November, mild of an average, particularly so for England and Wales, both Scandinavia looking really quite cold. And precipitation anomalies from the 13th, 21st of November, a bit west average in the north, near and all. A bit driving average further south. The latest wind flow map from Earth's nullschool.net shows that Storm Debbie is currently sitting across southern southeastern parts of uh, Scotland into northeastern England. Strongest winds just to the south of it, pushing through from the IOC into northern England. And uh, pretty breezy further south of that, actually. Okay, let's start going for chart data then. So this is how the latest Wimpler map, uh, no, this is uh, how the UK Euro is looking for midnight on Thursday with an area of low pressure just to the southwest approach. If I tell you through the midnight Friday, that low pressure zips across the south, so presumably brings heavy rain across more southern parts of the country. Then we go into a showery, uh, wet and windy spell uh, during the coming weekend. Plenty of low pressure in from off the Atlantic then. And uh, that takes us up to midnight next Monday. Low pressure still in the ascendancy. And uh, that low is bringing quite a bit of unsettled weather with it. We have got a ridge out in the Atlantic. So uh, possibly that area of high pressure that starts to push in behind this low. 
no, um, the low sort of clears away in this direction and then the high pressure follows it in. That might bring us some dry but perhaps some slightly colder weather as we move into the final uh, week or so of November. Big speculative, but it's a possibility. I can't again show my area of low pressure. Quite a bit further southwards, um, more towards the Bay of Biscay midnight on Thursday. So it looks like that's going into France. So we don't actually get a hit from that low on Thursday. Uh, after that, though, another area of low pressure winding itself up in the Atlantic. So we go to the weekend. That brings wet and windy weather in with it. Looking really quite unsettled as we go through Sunday the 19th. Deep area of low pressure, top of country, heavy rain, gale force winds. So that implies quite a wet and windy weekend to come. And then that low pressure clears out into the North Sea the early part of next week can we bring down a west to northwesterly flow they could bring some showers into northern and western parts of the country not cold though with that really the winds off the atlantic uh so not a proper northerly just like a bit of a, a west to northwesterly but gfs midnight run again that area of low pressure southwest approaches as we go into uh mid night on Thursday. That low doesn't wind itself up, but does push across into the weather being further wet weather Thursday into Friday. Then into the coming weekend, it's all low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic, bringing lots of wet and windy weather in with it. But as that low pressure clears away over next week, high pressure then ridges in from west. So that's why I'm talking about the UK Met run. So uh, the low pressure clears off into Scandinavia and replacing it is this area of high pressure building in from off the Atlantic. And that high pressure brings quite a bit of dry weather with it at 1,040 bars. So it is a strong area of high pressure. Might even bring a little bit of frost and fog with it as well as we move towards uh, day 10. Uh, beyond that, we keep the high pressure centred over the country. Notice a big northerly plunge from any northern and eastern parts of Europe, though. So a really cold northerly blast there. Uh, we're on the periphery of that under this area of high pressure being protected by the ridge. As we get towards the end of the uh, GFS midnight run, the high pressure eventually starts going northwards. Uh, we, begin, we begin to pull some colder air into that area of high pressure, but it's really for northern parts of Europe, but, but we've uh, got proper cold weather going on there. So the cold that's already across Scandinavia, basically ex expanding out to cover much of northern and uh, central and perhaps even eastern parts of Europe as we go towards the latter stages of November. We're always on the periphery close to this area of high pressure. Uh, that's my midnight run. This was GFS 6 then. Again, with low pressure to be southwest approaches on Thursday. Um, perhaps a little bit more of that area of low pressure with the GFS 6 there, bringing heavy rain, particularly to the south. Possibly some strong winds coming in that as well. And more wet, windy weather as we go into the weekend too. If this deep area of low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic, we get through to the early part of next week. And uh, we're looking at high pressure and starting to ridge in from the west. Relatively mild, the wind's coming off the Atlantic. Bit of a chill to it, I suppose. That wind, bit of a west northwesterly type flow. But essentially, the area of high pressure is uh, protecting us from a cold weather until we get to day 10. And then we find the high pressure starting to shoot up towards uh, Greenland with this deep trough of low pressure plunging into Scandinavia. And that starts to pull the wind into a genuine northerly. So we've got cold air lurking just to our north and by day 10, 23rd of November, that cold air starts to advance southwards across the country. So we get a cold snap developing then as we go into the last week of November. This is probably the 24th again, but in a northerly wind then and bring the minus 5 cells ice berm right the way through the country. Cold enough for shower to turn to snow, especially so in the north. Uh, we keep the wind in from the north and from the north east end to Saturday the 25th before the high pressure starts to ridge back in or topples back in over the top because she cuts off the northerly but probably still quite cold under that area of high pressure. That could definitely produce some of the gruesome too. So then we get to the very end of GFS 6 ever the high pressure going back to Greenland again and a hint of another northerly plunge uh, developing there as we get to months end. So that is Wednesday the uh, Wednesday the 29th of November. And we've got signs of another northerly uh, blast going on now about to take place there. Um, no, quite an interesting GFS 6 ed today.
If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, subscribe. If you so much everyone for doing that, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals World We thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. We only need to put on now around 15, one five subscribers to get ourselves to 17.2k. We are so close to 17,200. Please give us a sub. Tell your friends and family to subscribe and we thank you so much everybody for uh doing that okay gm again that area of low pressure just southwest midnight on thursday that could bring some very very wet weather into the south and then low pressure really winding itself up as we go into next weekend being wet and windy weather right the way through the country into those very unsettled conditions as we run on into the early part of next week as well with more low pressure in from off the atlantic back to set up for day 10 not much of a hint of a northerly there we've got high pressure over france Spain, and portugal low pressure in the north atlantic and winds are coming in from the west so no sign of a northerly but day 10 with that one let's see what the ecm is doing so again we've got this area of low pressure Still got a lot of uncertainty about this area of low pressure isn't there the thursday ecm has it further southwards again much more towards the bay of biscay um though we don't get an impact from that i don't think on the ecm or not much of one uh but as we go into the weekend then we find this big glow coming in off the atlantic and that does bring more wet and windy weather over the weekend that gets out of the way. High pressure ridges out to our west, so it turns a little bit drier and slightly colder through the early part of next week with like a northwesterly type frame. Might be cold enough to produce some night frost. Day 10 looks like it's starting to hint at high pressure going northwards again and possibly, or going northwards, it hasn't done so on the, the ECM run up to this point. But by day 10, uh, the ECM hints at high pressure going to start going northwards and possibly that could also be starting to threaten uh, a northerly blast. We're within relatively mild air up to that point midnight on thursday but cold air is lurking just to the north so if that high pressure starts going any further north that could really start to force down uh, a very very cold northerly plunge this is a precipitation forecast based on the ecm run from temetio.com so showering at the moment we go through to uh thursday and um, we do get some rain but no uh, low pressure on thursday um, down in the south, actually, that's what it's using. It's a blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, we don't get a direct hit from that uh, low pressure. This is first. We don't get a direct hit from that area of low pressure on Thursday. It does go off into France with the ECM. Other miles have that further north, also. So, Thursday's weather is still to be determined. Bear in mind, it's only Monday today. We're still trying <laughs> We're still trying to sort out uh, Thursday's weather. Uh, but anyway, beyond that, so we go, we keep it showery into the end of the week. And then, low pressure in off the Atlantic to bring lots of wet, windy weather uh, through the course of the coming weekend. Heavy rain followed by showers, and we keep it showery into the early part of next week as well. Then things dry out through the middle part of next week before more low pressure coming back in from the north. And just a hint that by day 10, started to turn a bit cold across central parts of Scotland with this band of rain perhaps coming south. That's a cold front, of course. So as the band of rain comes south, was behind that, the air turns into the north, and uh, it becomes cold. And there is a hint that showers are starting to turn to snow um, by day 10 there, 23rd of November, across central and northern parts of Scotland. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10 from, from the Icelandic Met Office. It gets us to the 23rd of November, 16 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our east and north east, high pressure is out in the Atlantic. A winds are coming from a westerly direction. Looks like they're going to set up an overly plunge, doesn't it? Does include the trial and the operation run. We've got 14 with high pressure, more or less over the top of the country. Low pressures towards Greenland. Ice and winds coming in from the west. If that's so mainly dry, but probably quite cold under the area of high pressure with some frost and fog. 13 with low pressure to our north and east. High pressure is out to west. Winds are coming in from the northwesterly direction. So, uh, again, that could be... Um uh, it's drier anyway with a high pressure out to the west whether what the temperature you're doing with that i mean there is like a northwesterly component to wind but the air is basically off the atlantic so there'll be a bit of chill to that but it's not it's not cold to be honest and then we've got eight with high pressure just out to our west and northwest around that we will bring the wind in perhaps from more of a northeasterly direction there is a trend there towards higher pressure drier conditions and a break in the deluge so that's the first thing to say 
But whether it gets cold or not, that's another matter. So uh, that's day 10. So beyond that, we find that... Uh, so this is the 24th of November. We find, man, again, high pressure in the Atlantic, low pressure to the north north east. That bring in a northwesterly. 12, like with uh, low pressure to the east, high pressure out to west. That bring a proper northerly blast down across the country, like the GFS 6 head operation run. Uh, we've got another 12 here with high pressure right over top of the country. And we've got 9 with high pressure sitting just to our east. Much more of an anti-cyclonic influence here, but whether it's a, a Maya bridge or a Carl bridge will depend on its exact positioning to its time. These are the options that we've got. Gets us 28th of November, nearly to the end of the month. 18 members of the ECM ensembles have lots of low pressure over and to the northern country, so that looks obviously very unsettled. We've got 12 with high pressure out to west. Low pressure is to the east. Winds coming in potentially from a northerly. Uh, with that, we've got another 12 with high pressure right over top of the country. That could produce frost, uh, frost and fog. And then uh, frost and fog even. Put your teeth in gap. And then we've got nine with high pressure much towards Scandinavia, bringing a gentle sort of south easy flow off the continent, which could be quite chilly. So the 18 there taking us back to uh, low pressure, but I mean, the majority is probably towards high pressure. You've got the 12 here, together with the 12 there and the 9 there. Um, probably we have got a, a majority towards higher, higher pressure, but again, the exact position is all important and critical. CFSB2, finally, means a 500 millibar high to break down into weak pairs. The first weak pair takes us from the 13th to the 19th of November. November the next week is unsettled with low pressure to uh, west and northwest, high pressure down towards Spain, winds coming up southwest direction, so still unsettled and reasonably mild. Week two is a trend here to the 26th of November, much more of an anti cyclonic influence here of high pressure bridging from the North Atlantic through the west of Europe. Uh, low pressures out in the Atlantic. Very difficult to say what the wind direction is with that. It could actually be kind of northeasterly, um, but we would need to run this, uh, some of the pre some of the energy for the low pressure underneath the ridge. So um, it's probably going to be more sort of south southeasterly with that. But it could be turning towards frost and fog anyway. Um, week three is three is going to be the twenty seventh November third of seven. High pressure then. It's oversight to the north country around that wind will be coming from an easterly direction. So that could well be cold for the very beginning of December. And then week four, it's all changed back to low pressure to fall to the 10th of November. Uh, or December, I should say, with low pressure coming back in from off the Atlantic. And um, now that looks much more unsettled with high pressure drifting away to the east and pulling out into the Atlantic. We might have a bit of a northwest southeast alignment to the jet stream with that. So um, that might be a little bit on the cold side, but uh, would be more unsettled as well. A very different CFS run to what I see over the past few days, though. So um, I think I'll wait and see about that. We'll see what the CFS is showing uh, tomorrow and in subsequent days. Okay, we don't. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about all this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. As I said, we only need to put on around 13 or so subscribers to get ourselves to 17.2k. Um, so if you could give us a sub and tell your friends about it, to subscribe, that'd be amazing. And we thank you so much, everyone. For doing that. Right, just coming up tomorrow, we have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We'll have the 30 day uh, extended look ahead with the uh, ECM model, um, the Europe Soviet extended European outlook, and the 10 to 40 day. I might be off to do some Christmas shopping tomorrow, maybe uh, in uh, Birmingham, I'm not sure. So um, I'm not sure when tomorrow's 10 to 40 day will be released. Might be quite late on when I get home from doing uh, extra sh uh, shopping. We'll see. But uh, for today's video, so anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and bye for now.